evening, readers. Welcome to the book launch of Wrong Way to Heaven by Kevin Petway. It's the first book in the Wrong Way series. Uh, it's a third series in the Misplaced Adventures universe. We are so excited you're here. You're going to be able to meet Mesquita and Rain and Heron and have more adventure in this incredible world. And if this series is not your favorite now, it will be. <laughs> Yay! So much fun doing all these new things. Hello, Woo! everyone. I am Kelly Lynn Colby, Editorial Director at Curse Dragon Ship Publishing. And tonight we have S.G. George, our Acquisitions Editor, and uh, soon-to-be Marketing Guru, totally against her will, but she's rocking it. Hey. Say hi, Sarah. Hi. And... If I blink twice, will somebody send help? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're trapped. Um, and we have, of course, Kevin Petway, our first and foremost author in Cursed Dragon Ship Publishing, who has agreed graciously to write more in his 13 Kingdoms universe. We're so excited about. Um, good evening, uh, agreed Kevin. Agreed might be strong. <laughs> <laughs> you also <laughs> cannot get free. You're also locked down. Sorry. <laughs> Forced at gunpoint is probably a little bit more accurate. He is also <laughs> frantically blinking. It's a <laughs> I don't even own a gun. I do, however, have a very pouty lip and I'm not ashamed of tears. So, you know, it works. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, welcome, welcome. Um, so everyone on here, please feel free to chat. Let us know what's going on. Um, Kevin loves to hear your snarky comments. So let's we let's go ahead and hear them. And meanwhile, I'm going to read Kevin Petway's very official bio that I made him send me last minute. Kevin Petway hails from Jacksonville, Florida, and is the author of the Misplaced Mercenaries books, a funny fantasy series that was a NYC Big Book Club winner, a finalist in the 2022 Imagine Awards, and has received several professional write-ups in Kirkus Magazine, for which the author did not even have to pay. He has published a modest number of short stories, both within and without the Mercenaries world. With more on the way. Most excitingly, this world is opening up for an all new misplaced adventure shared universe. Startlingly, neither Kevin's wife nor dogs are remotely impressed with these accomplishments. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Some I mean, people. Lisa's on. She can tell us how impressed she really is. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Awesome. I mean, well, she knows, but I don't know. I don't know if she wants to save face for her or save face for Kevin, you know? Really? Have you seen them? No, we're going to get all the snark. It's good. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. One of the dogs is snoring. That's how impressed the dogs are. All right, good one. Yep, that's, that's about right. So, Kevin, I want to start with you. This new world. So this one, you, it, uh, what was it, four years publishing Misplaced? Mercenaries, all five books in there and exploring those characters in this universe. And now you have brand new characters that you're introducing with their own journey. I'm wondering, where did you tell us a little bit about these brand new characters and where did they come from? Four years? Yeah, four years. because we did... so much longer. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, where, did the, where did the characters come from? Um, and tell us who they are. The um, the lead character is a young woman uh, named Masika, uh, who is a she is the the niece of the emperor of uh, Egrin, um, and I wanted. I wanted somebody that was going to be um, very separate from from Keen, who is who is really sort of this uh, snarky, um, uh, hard bitten, um, very sarcastic kind of character, and I wanted somebody who was going to be much more upbeat and happy, um, and um, basically she defeats the world's snark with her optimism. Um, that was, that was kind of, kind of my goal um, initially. And okay, then I started nice, working on her family. 
You made this nice, sweet, optimistic girl just so you could beat her down in this world of yours. That that really sounds terrible. Uh, <laughs> I think of that meme that's been going around a lot where it's like the characters are doing great. Um, everything's fine with the big fire and then the writer and just, you know, dumping that that lighter fluid onto the yeah. fire to make it worse. Yeah, I'm thinking that's that's kind of how you write books. And that's why they're so good. Um, I love that. But since we've met Masika now real quick, um, let us go ahead and read the back cover copy. So, Sarah, would that's you like me. to do that for us? Of course. I am definitely not being forced to do this. No, not at all. So, brave and clever young Masika, the daughter of a diplomat and niece of an emperor, has discovered a pair of ex-gods in a secret dungeon below the fell citadel. She promises to return them home, only to be thwarted by the king of the gods himself, High King Oldham of the Allure. So Masika takes matters into her own hands and sets off to find a way to bring her new friend to their home despite the High King's wishes. But a deal with a very questionable imp painted on a playing card in a seedy tavern sets the trio on a desperate adventure for the help of the Allure's constant and deadly enemy, the gods of the Darish Empire. Can Masika, no matter how resourceful, hope to overcome the will of two sets of deities to keep her promise? Hostile armies, ancient sorcerers, and a primordial monster bar her the way, but none is so formidable as Masika's most elegant and proper older sister. Meridis? Meridis. There we go. Excellent. Yeah. Well done. No, I really love, love uh, Meridis because she's a great foil yeah. for Masika. So I am wondering. Um, sorry, I'm looking at Facebook and I can't see if it is frozen. Um, the, the foil that you had for Masika at the first book, you already had her as a foil, but we didn't actually get to see her voice. And so you added her for the next version. Um, what do you think that did to the story? Uh, oh, do you just mean like during edits when we were, when we were working on it? Uh, Meridides, Meridides is in the short story. Is that what you're talking about? I'm sorry. No, I don't mean it doesn't her existing. Matter. I mean her being as a point of view character. So at first she was there, but she was kind of like the secret thing behind making Masika like yeah. crazy. But we didn't know her motivation really. So then when you added her as a point of view character, we got a completely different dimension to how this world gotcha. works. Gotcha. Which even though Masika is so positive, it's wonderful and it's refreshing and I adore her. I don't know how anyone can't. Um, and you have Meridides and you still kind of feel for her too, even though you also want to drown her in her own fancy bathtub. Um, but you at least know where she's coming from. So I was wondering when you, like, when you were writing her, like, Masika's one feeling, right? And then Meridides is another. Like, did you have to do something different when you were writing either character? Um, well, I already had Meridides' basic personality down, and I and I knew what was going on behind the scenes in all of those things that we, that we weren't seeing the first go around. Um, and, and what happened is I, I, I wrote, the, I wrote the book and turned it into, um, my editor who said, you know, we need more Meridides and you need some, some chapters here with her point of view. So, uh, I basically just went back and, and wrote those scenes that, that, uh, that were not initially in the book. Cause I, uh, my thinking was that that she was going to be sort of in the dark and you wouldn't know, you know, what was going on with her. Um, she would just pop up from time to time, having done all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but when I wrote it out. Um, I discovered that I liked Meridides a lot more than I thought. Um, and she was a lot more fun to write. And I think that that really came through in those chapters. Um, I wanted I wanted her to be very smart and capable, but I didn't realize exactly how smart and how capable she was until I until I really started digging into her and mm -hmm. and writing her character out. Um, and I'm really glad that um, 
that you did ask me to do that um, because I, I think I think that it added a lot to the, a, a lot to the book. Um, she, she has but, major like Princess Azula vibes. Princess Have you watched? Um, say, is this where we all bow our heads and preach and we know who that is? Yeah, The Last Airbender. Nobody. Oh, all no. you old folk didn't watch The Last Airbender. No, I did, but I don't remember which one she is. Princess Azula is. Yeah. Um, Zuko and the Avatar gang. Hmm. Anyway, she's super scary. Yeah, okay. And very cunning. Yeah, yeah. That, so I that's guess, probably I guess a fair right. comparison, no doubt. Yeah, it's just she throws a little bit more fire than um, Masika's sister. And is, is that oh, she's from the, the fire uh, thunder. Okay, I remember. Yeah. From the, air, from okay. the animated? Yes, the original from the animated. animated? Yeah, okay. that's really good. If you haven't seen it, Petway, it's amazing. You know, I've tried to watch those a couple times, and I think I've only ever gotten, I think like two or three times, I've gotten as far as like the third episode, and I'm just like, eh. And, and I understand that if you stick with it, Is there it, not enough amazing. cursing? Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. It's so funny. Anyway, uh, this, this is not about selling the last avatar. Let's talk about Kevin's book now. Yeah, but that's a good comparison, right? Yeah. The readers, they're like, you know, who, what what is this? It's it's like that. It makes sense. Um, that person, anyways. It is. Let's face it. We all have like these certain tropes people fit into, right? Which is why I like when they don't fit any tropes because then you have Rain and Heron. <laughs> We're yeah. like, what? No? So you've got these two, they're, they are gods, but they're lesser gods, and they've been kicked out of their kingdom, right? So Rain is a lot more snarky and kind of not happy ever. And Heron has, I mean, she's flighty like a bird. It's very much like a bird. I'm wondering when, so we we talked earlier before we started recording about um, the walks that you take, like in the morning and you see all the wildlife and everything. Did you ever like watch the Herons and decide, ooh, Karen has to do that? Yes, absolutely. There is, matter of fact, I, I recently posted a picture um, mm -hmm. that had a uh, Lena will tell you what kind of heron it was, um, but it, uh, it's a it's a it's a smaller, uh, very soft kind of blue gray heron, and I was like, that's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. Um, and and those two characters were a lot of fun for me too. They were. Um, because they are very much lesser, uh, they were lesser gods to begin with before they got caught. Um, and, um, and then they were, they were, they were picked out to be captured because they were such minor gods. And it was assumed that no one would ever bother going to look for them. Well, it and was a proper assumption. They happened. were still there. Yes. Mm. So when, uh, lesser blue hair and thank you, Lena. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so when Masika finds them, they have been um, underneath the Citadel for, you know, over a thousand years um, being tortured and experimented on because they're, you know, they're, well, they're still, you know, they're, they are lesser gods. They're still functionally immortal. So, you know, you can do kind of anything to them. And, you know, the guy who caught them was really, really horrible. And did Great. anything to them, for sure. Yes. Um, and, and, and that was fun because that tied back to the previous series. And so, you know, it was all, um, and I'm sorry, I heard he tortured them and did anything to them. And that was fun. And it was fun. <laughs> well, so I had like a little, I'm not even sure I ever actually drew it out, but I had a map in my head of Angram's dungeons where he lived. And I knew where that room was, you know, like like exactly where you know how to get to it and, and everything. But it just wasn't part of that story. And there was no reason to include it. And, you know, and it's like there's every time I write a book, there's over a thousand different things that don't go into it. Right. You know, because you, you've got all this world stuff that you've made and you know, they walk past a room. Well, you know what's in that room. Some, most of the time you don't, but sometimes you do. Sometimes you know what's in that door, um, that in that castle that those characters just walk past, but they walk past the door. There's no reason for them to stop there. 
Um, and so, you know, it was like that. And it was really, really neat and fun to, to, to go back and pull, um, pull at those story threads that I knew were there and, and, and make something new with it. That was, I, I love doing that. That's, that's a bunch of fun. I love it. It's really cool. And those are not the only things you pulled from the original series. We also have some characters that we are very familiar with. Some of my favorite, because it is no secret that Illusions of Decency is my favorite book. Um, and so you pulled some characters out of that and brought them in here. Can you tell us a little bit about those repeat characters that fans get to play with? Yeah. So, um, and again, this was, this was from the, um, you know, from, from everybody's backgrounds in the, in the world Bible. And I'm not even sure it comes out that, um, uh, the characters that, that Kelly are, is referring to are, uh, Mahu and Sabni. And, um, and I, I knew where Mahu sat in the whole Royal family, but I don't think it ever comes up in that book. Um, but because Masika was niece to the emperor, then, you know, well, that makes Mahu her, her uncle from the other side. And so, you know, and then I was like, okay, well, I wanted, I wanted Masika to be, you know, she's not like, you know, she's not like Sarah where, where Sarah was like, you know, uh, Grew up on the streets. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, but I, I was going to say, you know, if you put a sword in Sarah's hand, everybody run. Um, and she's not like that, but I wanted her to be functional with, you know, in being able to defend herself because she's kind of a tomboy. And, um, and so it just made sense because Mahu and Sabni are, are very much about training people, um, you know, in, in, with weapons and, and, how, you know, to how to defend themselves. It was, it was Sabni who taught, uh, Queen Megan, um, how to, you know, uh, function in a combat role. Um, and so, oh, sorry, that little chest just came up again. I gotta, I gotta click on that. Okay. See? So, uh, <laughs> it's compulsive. Anyway. Um, yeah. And, and so, you know, I, I just kind of had all of these things floating around and, and I just like pick that over here, pick that over here which is the real advantage of starting out with such, you know, with, with a world that you've worked in for so long, um, is that a lot of those elements are already there. You know, I made up a bunch of new stuff for the book because, you know, it has, you have to, it, it has to, it, it, you don't want to retread. Um, but at the same time, the world is lived in. And so um, it was really easy to take pieces that would fit together and, and, and not just fit together, but fit together in fun ways that you didn't think about before. So. They just come up when it's appropriate. So, yeah. Sarah, just like all of your books, um, Kevin, that there's humor is an important part of it. And it needs to be right, because there's some really dark sh stuff that happens. I suddenly couldn't remember if I was supposed to curse yeah. or not. <laughs> <laughs> My brain was like, wait, um, the, so I don't know. So a lot of dark stuff happens. So the humor kind of makes it more palatable, right? Kind of like yes. they say when you have people that are like policemen or firemen and they have a really dark sense of humor, cause that's how they survive the horrible stuff they have to witness on a daily basis. Um, so, but the humor, I just, I love it. It makes things, I don't know, more alive. I think more real. Yeah. So Sarah, was there anything in there that as you were going through it, that really stuck out to you? So far as funny. Yeah, Actually, so really at the beginning of each chapter, there's a uh, excerpt from a encyclopedia that Masika's one of Masika's other brothers has written, um, and those were probably my favorite part. Just the snark that this guy has <laughs> regarding the gods he's a who very are not his own. Scholar. <laughs> yeah, he's. He's a very serious scholar and he uses very serious language. But I just, I love the court talk where people say, oh, your hair looks nice today. It means you look like a fucking rat's nest. I just, sorry. <laughs> I can't remember if we're supposed to do that on this show or not. 
Um, yeah, no, that's a good point because that because as you were saying, like he you can see the bias. Right. Yeah. So when people are writing things like you see the bias for because they're he's uh, Egrin, Right. So for the Egrin gods, you see the bias when he's telling stories of all kinds of gods. He's definitely. But our gods are the best. <laughs> yeah. And, and like he'll turn around and he like admonish the other gods for, for one thing or another. And then he'll his gods do the exact same thing. He's like, yeah, those guys are great. <laughs> but I love those guys. He, he is actually set up as being an almost heretical moderate uh, in, in Egrin. Yeah, as, oh as far as his religious views are uh, go. Because, you know, he even goes as far as to, like, acknowledge the other yeah. gods. Yeah. So, <laughs> in, some, so in some circles, that's a problem. Yeah, Bix are probably in Meridity circles. She's probably not happy with him either. Yeah. Yeah. It's very big conflict here. Um, I love it. It's fun. The way that that the um, excerpts set the stage for whatever chapter, like it takes all of the burden off having to do like an intro. Oh, and they were in a swamp and it had big bugs in it, like sort of paragraph and changes it into kind of like this cool little lore snippet where like, oh, a thousand years ago, there was a story about the big bugs in the big swamp. And then it ends with like a little twist of the the meaning and it, it just worked really well. Nice. Thank nice. You. Yeah, that's funny. I for, I forgot those parts because they were fun to format, but they add so much color. <laughs> because yeah, the thing, he didn't do the the great like he's I mean misplaced mercenaries is famous for the chapter titles, right? So yeah. you would think, oh, he didn't want to do this this time. It's just too much work, right? I'm just gonna call him chapter one. But then he writes these long, complicated lore things, and they're awesome and they're colorful and they they do the same thing the chapter titles did, just like yeah. you said, right? It sets the tone. Um, I'm not sure it was less work, though, that way. I don't. <laughs> uh, certainly not for Kelly. The, Kelly and I have a weekly meeting, and she came on one day. It was just, like, brooding. And I'm like, what's wrong, Kelly? And she's like, Kevin Petway. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's normally how we start our meetings. <laughs> I'm you making him cut them. I said, don't make him cut him, Kelly. <laughs> No. Um, so, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, we do want to make sure that you know that the link um, is going up. You can go to uh, cursedragonship.com slash wrong way to heaven and get your copy now. Um, we do want to give away a copy. We need to figure out how to do that on all the things. Um, so I'm going to say I'm going to give I'm giving Petway two extra copies. So Petway, I'm putting on this shoulders ready that you can, if you want to send out on your newsletter that you can give away two physical oh. copies. So okay. if anyone wants a chance at these physical copies, make sure to join his uh, newsletter, which you can do at kevinpetway.com. So join his newsletter at kevinpetway.com and he will send out a thing so that if you would like to win them, he will sign them with his official author's autograph. Won't you? Yes, yes, absolutely. And uh, and 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 this next month's uh, newsletter is going to be uh, all about my my hilarious um, trip down the stairs uh, in the basement. Uh, which <laughs> yeah, that's a good which, point. You actually look great. So which resulted in me um, um, being unable to walk for about three days, um, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somehow I don't think you mean in an RV. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Oh gosh, it was uh, uh, that was that was an experience, and like like not not quite, almost, but not quite. Two weeks after Lena fell down the stairs, so I, I think yeah. your stairs are haunted. We have a new story to tell, and it's yeah. the story of the haunted stairs. Yeah. Totally different stairs. She fell down the, the main stairs in the house. I fell down the stairs going down into the basement. Maybe y'all need to let those lesser gods out that you've been torturing. I think there's some bad karma going on. Yeah, which reminds me, Lena asks, because we were talking about the lesser blue heron. She says, uh, when she was asking, does heron in the book, the goddess, uh, uh -huh. does she pick fiddler crabs and sand fleas off the jetties? Because that's what we, the the there's a little seawall there at, in the, uh, at the river. And so those heron, the herons are always picking uh, bugs and, and, and 
fiddler crabs off the off the wall? And the answer, Lena, is yes. Um, like I said, they're both lesser gods, and Heron is the goddess of catching um, small animals in uh, slow or non-moving water. That is that is her domain. So I mean, yeah. she saves Masika's dad from like these huge nasty hornet things. I mean, I love her. She can stay around anytime. Um, nice. what's Rain the god of? I know the answer, but I want them to know the answer. Uh, oh, yes. Rain is the god of doing things out of doors in poor weather, and as a result of that, because uh, Kelly said that he's he's always cranky. Um, he only gets happy when the weather is bad. So anytime it's sunny outside, he's in a terrible mood. Uh, and, the weather and, is awful. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> With more curse words. It's exactly right. <laughs> also, Og wants to know um, why you pushed Lena down the stairs and then made her go and get revenge. I mean, that has to be what yeah. happened. It's, it's the only logical so. conclusion. We were carrying a sofa upstairs, which is now right over there. Um, and uh, I was I was up top because I was I was having to lean down to to hold it, and we we determined that it would be easier for her to be at the bottom. And so she was she was standing on one of the steps and lifted the the sofa up to to get to get a better grip on it. And when she did, uh, she basically lifted it up, it up right up into herself and knocked herself down <laughs> the stairs. And so I'm standing there with the sofa in my hands and watching her go, you know, backwards end over end. And um, thinking about that is still kind of terrifying to me. Yeah, um, that, that was sense. actually way scarier than than what happened to me, even though I got hurt much worse. Uh, but uh, I, that's very important. It's a very important um, part of the story. <laughs> but it was funny because, you know, we're doing everything we can to get this goddamn sofa up the stairs. And there, our, our stairs go up and then it turns and it goes, you know, back up the other way. And so... Uh, you know, it was everything that we could do to get it step by step by step. And as I'm watching her fall, the sofa's in between us. So I can't <laughs> even get to her. I'm just watching her fall. Can't do anything about it. And then I was next to her. And I don't actually remember how it happened. Except that when I turned around, the sofa had already been pushed all the way up to the top of the <laughs> stairs and was, was out of the way. And and so, I you know. Someone know that you pulled I, that dang thing up and was at her side practically when she hit the bottom. That's called adrenaline, and that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess it just scared the shit out of me, and and you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I I don't really like I said I don't I don't even remember doing it. I I don't remember. I I do sort of remember running down the stairs. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because I'm and that time you know, didn't trip. I find that part amusing. Yeah. Well, when I tripped, um, I was I was carrying laundry in either hand because our our uh, all of our, our washing machine stuff down in the basement. And so I had no balance. And and I, I fell down, you know, one flight and then managed to turn to fall down the other flight down down all the way into the basement <laughs> and like knocked a big hole in the wall with my head and uh oh god it was terrible i went to that bookstore so uh, the books are in a, in a new bookstore and i went to the bookstore and the woman is giving me the cash for the books and somehow i have it in my head that that she's she because she was giving me some small bills and i'm like she needs these small bills in her register for her store. So I should give her, you know, I should give her big bills back for all of the money she just gave me. And that will make everything right. Now, no part of that logic holds water. There's, there's <laughs> you know, A, I'm just giving her the money back that she just paid me for the books. And B, I'm giving her large bills instead of the small bills, which was the whole idea. But, you know, How I- did you 
that hard. And this was this was much later in the afternoon, and I was still concussed. But <laughs> oh my it, it, it all worked out fine. I I think yesterday I stopped walking with the cane, and this was oh. this would be a week a week ago tomorrow. It was oh last gosh. Wednesday. My gosh. Yeah. Shane says um, you like getting the couch upstairs and then getting to her side is better than teleporting to her side and having the couch come tumbling after. <laughs> it definitely works out better this way. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think about it that way. That was, that was very thoughtful of me not to teleport. That's right. <laughs> I mean, because that was an option. <laughs> And my yeah. copy editor senses are going off because the most suspicious part of this story is that you own a home in Florida with a basement. Uh -huh. I know. You are I'm not wrong. I told that about him too. Thank you very much. Go go ahead, Petway. I if it rains more than three days in a row, which okay. it does, um, the time. It, then the sump pump goes off and and it has to constantly be bailing our house out. Uh -huh. um, Could be a houseboat. Keep it from Portland. sinking. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's what happens when houses were built a really long time ago, and they didn't think about that. Lynn so. says, I heard the bill conversation at the bookstore and wondered what the fuck you were talking about. <laughs> oh, I think she didn't come to your aid. Oh, I see, Lena. That's <laughs> no, she was all, you know, she was trying to be supportive and, like, sit in the other, you know, they, they've got all these little reading rooms. It's, it's, it's such a so cute, cute bookstore. It really you is. You should go through and, like, give us a tour, like, video and give us a tour. That'd be cool. I'd love to see it. Yeah, yeah, that would be fun. I would love yeah. to do that. So, you know, when you can walk again. No cane, but, you know, when you can walk a little bit more. Yeah, right now it's going to be a little jerky, but. Uh... <laughs> adds character. That's right, adds character, adds character. Um, so I do want to also mention that this was part of the, we offered during the big Kickstarter for The Last Night at the Jolly Chicken, which you can also get. Um, that is a great book. I highly recommend it. It's got one story from each authors who are in this Misplaced Adventures. Um, yeah, that one is so much fun. It's so much fun. Also has a story by Jodalyn Nye, Todd Fonestock, and Kevin J. Anderson. Um, and you can get that at um, uh, cursedragonship.com slash last night at the Jolly Chicken. So I uh, highly recommend that one. But in the... Um, Part of that, we had the Kickstarter so that we could get that made and start this whole awesome thing off. And when we did that, there were people who actually said, please, please put me as a character in your book. So you had a couple in this. And I was wondering, what was that experience like to actually take someone who's like, please, I want to be in your book and actually be able to creatively insert them in? Yeah, that was fun. Because um... <laughs> one of them was my brother. So that's so cool. Yeah. Yeah, and he well now he had very he had more specific uh, ideas for for what he wanted uh, for his character, which was you know it was it was very much a bit part, and and that was fine. Um, the other person um, was was not so um, considered when she uh, she <laughs> she asked me, so she turned into She's a like recurring character. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah. No, um, I think we just need to kill my brother in every book. I think it'd be hilarious. Um, yeah, that was fun. I, 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 I enjoyed that. I had not done that before. And, um, and, and, uh, yeah, I don't see it, why not. It was, it was cute when, uh, you know, when he's like, he's like, no, 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 I, you know, I want you to, you know, I, he basically said, I want to be an unimportant character. I want to be killed off almost immediately. And I'm like, well, I can, I can certainly accommodate that. You're like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, hey, I, I don't know. It, <laughs> what was that? Say less. That's right. Done. Problem yeah. solved, all gone. So uh, those are yeah. Cool. But the other one was, uh, I, I, I. She actually became part of Meridity's story, um, and uh, and that turned out to be a lot of a lot of fun for me uh, because then I, I, I suddenly I when I when I first had the idea of of making her that character, um, which had was was just going to be in the you know in the background. You were never going to see her. Um, and then I started writing her and again, started really liking her. And so it, 
it suggested some new uh, plot elements moving forward that are going to be fun for me to play with. It's nice when people are like, where do you get your ideas from, right? And the ideas are everywhere, right? And so this is one that actually sparks something. That's really cool. I love that. Yeah. Um. So, Sarah, tell me all the things Kevin did wrong. Go ahead. No. <laughs> Where do I begin? Yeah, you probably should have should have led with that when she had more time to answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, you've gotten really clean. Your stuff, it, yeah, it, I, it, it's amazing. Yeah, I think like the most prominent edit wasn't actually. I was telling you that you needed to change something. There was a word, and I hadn't ever like heard it before, so I looked it up, and you used it as an adjective instead of a verb, or something. A verb instead of an adjective, I think. And I, I left the message, this is not technically correct, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. I remember that, yeah. And 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 I have to admit that that is kind of the way that I speak. Um, yeah. I, I just sort of borrow any word that means sort of approximately the, what I want, change the context and hope that it flies, um, which is probably why frequently people don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah, I just used the wrong word entirely. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, by the way, Lena says she has time to hear all the things that Kevin did wrong. It's fine. <laughs> He's got nothing else to do. <laughs> Girl, we are hooked up on Discord. We can chat later. Right? We can make this happen. Blanket for it. She can add. What are you talking Lena about? Kevin's like, with this isn't fun stuff. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, blanket Fort's on. Yay, yay, Blanket Fort. Um, says Kevin's writing is so good. Um, yeah, it only gets better, so it's really cool. And Al Light says Kevin rocks. That's right. Do you play any instruments? You don't play any instruments, do you? Me? Yeah. Uh, I'm just curious. I just want to know what I know about you. I don't know. Do the strings of fate count? <laughs> so when I was four or five, I, uh, I took violin lessons for easily a month that's young easily a month (laughs) um and then when i was maybe around 12 i took piano lessons for probably twice that long um and that's about it um i i played with lena's didgeridoo once but um TMI. You know. TMI. I say I don't want to know what you play with Lena about. I couldn't. I, I couldn't. You know, Lena was much better at, at the you know the the sort of relaxed throat part of it than I was. I was really no good at that. Uh, but, if you're at all, uh, no, no, I don't play. Want his book? Trust me, Zay. But go ahead and put the link up again. And so you know, the um, Lena says that Kevin's favorite instrument is his mouth. So I mean, this totally leans in with everything else we were talking about. But Jen Bear is very nice. Um, she says uh, this book has such a different feel from the last series too. It's great range in writing, and I agree. It's not. It, it's not. It doesn't feel like you've got a different point of view character, and it feels like you have a different point of view character. Um, yeah. It doesn't feel like a rehashing. Of the old one, and um, I the uh, the um, next one, so it'll be your way, and that one is wrong way home, right? Wrong way home. Yes. Yes, wrong way home. So wrong way to heaven now. Wrong way home is coming up, um, and I just think it's very clever of you to take this very positive girl, who by the way stays positive all the way through it. You gotta love her, but she has to. Quite frankly, I don't see how she could have done anything yeah. that she was doing if she wasn't. You know, thinking I can totally if she didn't believe she could do it, she definitely wouldn't have got there. Um, but so um, but to take this positive one, but the whole series is wrong way. <laughs> she's like positive. She's going to do it. She's focused, but she's totally doing it the wrong way. And yeah. I just I love that. It's it's very clever. Well, and that's that's kind of the theming for it is that, um, you know, she's got everything against her. Um, and her successes come from who she is. And it's, it's really, it's really very much about believing in yourself. Um, when, even when there's no reason to, when there's, you know, when, when everything, like, like I said, when everything is against you, um, you know, her belief carries her through in herself. Um, and, uh, 
you know, that, that wasn't keen. It wasn't even really Sarah. Um, you know, they had, they had each other and, and Masika starts out, even though she's with these other people, she's she kind of on her own. Right. Yeah. But, but she's, she's kind of on her own as far, as far as, um, her, her, you know, motivations and, um, and, and who's, you know, who's watching out for her. Um, that does change as, you know, as the story goes on. But, um, yeah, it was just a, um, I, I really wanted there to be some, some difference, uh, in those, in those characters. And I, I ended up, you know, just loving this because she's, she's fantastic. I, I like her a lot. Yep. It's, it's not just bad guys that I like. <laughs> I mean, this is insight right there. I mean, that's it. I mean, Sarah wasn't a bad guy. She was stuck with a bad guy who had a heart of gold. One of yeah. those. Yeah. Um, well, you, but, but we joked about the fact that, you know, my, my favorite, my favorite, my favorite two characters from the, from the first series uh, were uh, Eli, Eli and Jasmere. Um, yeah. And, you know, both of those were villains. Um, yeah. Very bad ones. Well, Jasmine, anyways. Eli really wasn't that bad. He was also stuck in his own circumstances. Jasmine made choices. She was in control. But you know what? Character arc for them, too. I have to give you that. Your characters do change, um, which is an important part of powerful writing. So you definitely have that part down. Yeah, Blanket Ford agrees with you. Love Jasmine. Well, he had to read her. So somehow or another, he made it work, right? Um, you probably have to have some kind of empathy for the characters if you're going to read them, even if you don't agree with them, I would think. Um, well, I mean, you can write a two-dimensional character that, you know, that doesn't, you know, it's just sort of a throwaway, but that's not really fun. No. And, like, either I or Sarah would let you do that. I can't. Uh, and then you've got Shannon. I mean, come on, you got all these editors on you. <laughs> you know what? I, I got to say, um, that, has, that has been one of the best parts of this whole process is the fact that I'm not writing in a vacuum. Um, it is collaborative. Um, and I never feel like I'm doing it all by myself. Um, and I'm working with people, uh, whose opinions I value and trust. And I know that everybody there is to make the book better or everybody is there to make the book better rather. And that's a, uh, that's a great feeling. I agree. Well, I am so glad that very mean, mean editor made you write more books because they're phenomenal. Um, so thank you so much. Um, last reminder, if you would like to have a chance to win a free signed copy, please make sure to join his newsletter at kevinpetway.com. And you can get your copy right now, um, ebook or paper. It's also on Kindle Unlimited. Um, and go to cursedragonship.com slash wrong way to heaven. Or click the little link that uh, our awesome Zafo put up. Even if you don't plan on reading the book right now, if you have Kindle Unlimited, put it in your library because it counts as a sale and it helps us out. Well, only if they read a bunch. They've got to read it, too. I thought that even just putting it on the bookshelf would say. Um, I wish we making a lot more the money. The sales money. Oh, never mind. Y'all do what you want. <laughs> they want to read it. Trust me. Yeah, so we are there. We are there for your reading pleasure. Um, excellent. So any last words? I really like the dad. I I appreciate like family dynamics in my fiction because I love my family. And I think that too many people these days don't love their dads. And so as somebody who does love their dad, I appreciate that he got to go on a part of this adventure with her, by the way. That was another thing that I really wanted to do that the, the, another uh, demarcation uh, between between this series and the last one, because uh, neither Keen nor Sarah had family other than each other. Um, and and I, you know, obviously, because of because of Meridides and and and, and the brothers and stuff like that, there's. You know, there was going to be a family there, 
Um, but I wanted, I wanted it to be a, a strong, positive relationship. Um, I, I felt like that was very important. And I, you know, it, that's not my experience. Uh, <laughs> but, um, but it makes me really happy when I see other people who have that and they've, they've got yeah. those, those very strong, uh, good adult relationships with their parents. And, and, you know, she's, she's on the cusp of that. She's, she's in between child and adult, uh, in his eyes. And so it's, you know, he's learning to trust her. He's, he's learning to, uh, you know, to, to let her have her lead and he, and he's trying to be supportive. And I, yeah, I, I, I really, uh, I keep saying this, God, sounding like a broken record. I really liked that. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes the right words are just the right words. It's all good. Works for us. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. And we hope to see you soon. I think what's our next thing we have? Hopefully the cover reveal Sunday. So we're going to find out um, for the next book in the Misplaced Adventures series, which is uh, William A uh, L.J. Galaney's book, uh, Chromium Rise. So we hope to see you Sunday. Yeah, Thank cool. you, everyone. <laughs> Bye.